Welcome to lesson four. This is missing numbers in multiplication and division. Let's start with a definition of multiplication. Here I've drawn one block and three blocks. If we multiplied this three blocks times nine, we get something like this. And you could count all of these blocks here um, and recall that we call this, we call this answer our product. And you could count all of the little boxes, but if you know your multiplication tables, you should know that three blocks times nine would equal 27 blocks. Recall too that this is a fact family. And a fact family in multiplication is where you can make four different problems out of three numbers. And the three numbers are three, nine and 27. And here are the four problems we can make. We have three times nine is 27. Nine times three is 27. So these are our factors in this fact family, in this multiplication pro problem. Um, and you can swap the factors and they'll equal the same thing. And then you have 27 divided by nine is three and 27 divided by three is nine. So you can swap the factors there as well. So that's just to jump in. Uh, when you have a missing number, it's important to know what you're missing. In this case, these numbers are our factors and this number here is the product. Now remember, you can interchange your factors, but that doesn't really help us, right? So we could interchange this and write six times a equals 72. That doesn't really help us. But in a fact family, we also have two division problems. The first might be 72 divided by a equals six. Again, that doesn't help us, but remember that we can swap our factors. And you may have already figured this out, but this is the problem that we're looking for. 72 divided by six will give us a. Okay, so it is, if you are familiar with fact families, if you understand them, uh, you can see that you can rearrange this problem to find out what A is. And in actuality, what we have is a fact family of 72, 6, and A. And A stands for some number, we just don't know what it is, okay? We're gonna move on to missing numbers in division. And again, I'm just gonna go over some basic vocabulary. The quotient is our answer. The dividend is the number that's being divided, and actually, um, it's really helpful to think about it this way. The dividend in a, in a division problem is also the product of a multiplication pro problem. So, okay, I apologize for the church bells. It is distracting. <laughs> All right, so there are three ways to set up a division problem. The first one is just your basic your dividend divided by your divisor is going to equal your quotient. And that's how you'll see a lot of problems. If it's set up like a fraction, and remember all fractions are actually division problems. That's important for you to remember. All fractions are in a sense division problems. So if it's set up like a fraction, this is what it'll look like. Dividend divided by divisor equals quotient. And the dividend is in the the top of your fraction. It's the numerator of your fraction. Your divisor is your denominator. And then finally, of course, you're, you might see the divisor box. This should look familiar to you. And where would you put these three things in the divisor box? Right, you would put the dividend inside the divisor box, the divisor goes outside the divisor box, and the quotient um, goes on top. Okay, let's look at a few problems. It helps to identify in a problem where you're missing a number from uh, a division problem, it helps to identify the product or the dividend in your division problem. So where is the dividend in k divided by six equals 15? That's right, it's k. Actually, I'm gonna move it over here. It's K. Where is the div dividend in 126 divided by M equals seven? 
Well, it goes inside the divisor box. So 126 is your dividend or your product. Where is your dividend in C divided by six equals four? Yes, it's C. How does this help us? Okay, so if I know that K, the unknown, is my dividend, it's also my product. So the other two are factors in the multiplication problem. So all I have to do is multiply 15 times six, and I will get K. In the bottom problem, again, these two problems, the dividend is the one that's unknown. So all I have to do is multiply my two unknown numbers, or my two known numbers to get the unknown number. Now in the second problem, it's a little bit trickier, but not if you remember fact families. Remember that if this is the product in our fact family, all we have to do is swap our factors and we get the same thing. So if 126 divided by m equals seven, then all I have to do, because this is a fact family, is swap these. So 126, um, no, I shouldn't have put that, divided by seven will equal m. Okay? All right, so let's get into the practice problems here. The first one is a times seven equals 91. Well, our um, product is 91. Okay, so remember these are the factors, a and seven. So 91 divided by seven will equal a. 91 divided by a will equal seven. Okay, so that gives us a equals 13. Again, these were assigned for homework so I would advise you to please pause the video, maybe work through these problems on your own, and then check your answers. Now we have 20 times B equals 440. Again, 440 is our product. So 440 divided by 20 is going to equal B. And again, if we swap these, they, that should be the same as well. B, therefore, equals 22. All right, C, C divided by seven equals 15. This is our unknown. This also happens to be our dividend, and it also happens to be the biggest number, the product. So all I have to do is take the other two numbers and multiply them, and I will get C, which is 105. 144 divided by D equals eight. 144 is my product or my dividend. So all I have to do is swap these factors and I will get D, which is 18. E says seven W equals 84. All this means is that seven times w equals 84. Well, right off the bat, you should know that 84 is our product. So all we have to do is divide 84 by seven and we'll get w and that answer is 12. So w is 12. Same thing here. All this means is eight times m equals 112. 112 is our dividend. It's also our product. So all we have to do is divide 112 by 8 and we'll get m. That should equal 14. g is 360 divided by x equals 30. Our dividend is 360. Again, I all, all I have to do is swap our factors. So 360 divided by, if I rewrite this, 360 divided by 30 equals x. Okay, I can swap my factors. 
so x equals 12. Now, I, I hope you're noticing that if you can identify the dividend or identify the product, then you can find these numbers fairly quickly. Here we go with h, it says n divided by 5 equals 60. Where's our dividend in this problem? Again, it's the numerator of our problem, just like here. 360 and n are both numerators, they're both the dividends. So that means that this is the product. So all I have to do to find it is multiply. 60 times 5 is equal to n, and that is 3. 